Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're here with another video on YouTube to help you improve your chess game. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about determining the source of errors. So if uh, you're playing a game and after the game you lose and you made some mistakes, you know, we could look at an engine and every time the engine drops by a certain amount, let's say half a pawn or more, you know, you know it's a mistake, but just saying something's a mistake is not very helpful. What you really want to know is why is it a mistake? Why did you make that mistake? And what can you do in the future to minimize your chances of making a similar mistake? So when you're going over a game with a strong player, you know, he can easily look at the board sometimes and say, you shouldn't do that. In, in life, we call that destructive criticism because he's, he's, he's telling you something, but it's not really constructive. It doesn't help you. All right, it helps you identify the move, of course, but you really want to know, what can I do about this? So when I'm giving someone a lesson and they make a mistake, you know, whether I spot it or whether the engine spots it, you know, we don't just say, okay, that's a mistake. Now, occasionally the engine will say something's a mistake because you missed some brilliant combination that only a computer could find, and that's different. That's not really the kind of mistake that you're worried about. You're more worried about mistakes that in the future you should know better. And as an instructor, I'm always trying to ask my students, you know, why did you make that move? Or, all right, this move doesn't work for this reason, but why didn't you see that? And we talk about it and we try to figure out what the source was. Maybe uh, they made a quiescence error, they didn't look far enough, or maybe uh, they didn't spend enough time on the particular move that they played. Or th There's a lot of reasons somebody could make a mistake on a move and we want to figure out what they are so that we can work on that better. I mean, for instance, a common mistake might be playing too slow and then getting into unnecessary time trouble at the end and then you have to play faster at the end and then you throw everything away. Well, the source of the error isn't the bad move at the end of the game. The source of the error is taking three or four minutes on every move early in the game when you should be taking a minute and 20 seconds instead. All right, so let's, take, let's see if we can find a couple examples. Um, I picked out a, a random kind of game from my library here. Uh, it's an amateur game. Let's take a look at what happened. So white, white played d4, black played d5, white played London, bishop f4, currently very, very popular. Black played knight f6, white played e3, black played e6, knight bd2, c5, break move, c3, bishop d6, offering the trade of bishops. Now white has three things he can do. He can trade bishops, which helps black develop the queen, but it's okay. He could play bishop g3 so that when the bishop takes, he can take toward the center with the rook pawn and open up the h-file. Or he could just leave it there and let black take, and then that pawn on f4 will give white a semi-open file and pressure on the e5 square. I think Grandmaster Kovacevic on his, in his book on the London calls doing that the, the fat pigs or something where he, he thinks the the two pawns on the fourth rank give white some pressure. All right, so white plays bishop g3, castle, knight f3, queen e7. Now white should play something like bishop d3 and then castle and then get his queen out, get his rooks over. White play, he moves a piece twice in the opening, knight e5. It's not a terrible move, but it violates the important principle. Move every piece once before you move any piece twice unless there's a tactic. Knight e5 is not a tactic. Black wasn't threatening anything. If, if white had played bishop d3 and black had played e5, white would just say, thanks for the fork. So it wasn't like if you don't go there right away, you know, something bad will happen. So there was no rush to put the knight on e5, but he did. All right, so knight e5, again, not a terrible move. Just, you know, I try to teach my students, move every piece once before you move any piece twice unless there's a tactic. All right, so black attacks the knight again, but the knight is safe for the moment, okay? Um, we have to watch out for lines like bishop takes, pawn takes, and then knight to g4. Of course, in this case, knight g4 would be attacked by the queen, so maybe knight d7. So let's say white does nothing here. a3, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight here. Can white save this pawn? And the answer is yes. He could play f4, makes the bishop kind of bad, but saves the pawn. Or he could play knight f3. Anyway, back to the game. So, so, so far... What we've determined is that bishop takes 
e5 is not a threat. All right, white plays bishop to d3. Uh, this is a time-stamped game. They're playing 65, and you can see the two players are rated 1,700. Um, so I'm not sure which server this was on. It's been a couple years since this game was played. But it's probably not 1,700 USCF. It's probably a 1,700 server, which is a little bit lower. Anyway, white plays bishop d3. And if you look at this time stamping, white played that move in 12 seconds. That's probably a little bit fast, but that's the normal kind of move you want to play here. So you don't want to take forever. I'd rather have someone take 12 seconds and play a normal move like that than take four minutes. All right, so black says, I'm going to hit that knight again. Now he's hitting the knight three times. It's only guarded twice. So white has to decide what are all the ways to save the knight. Well, the normal way of saving it here is probably just to take off one of the knights because black can always play f6 and drive the knight away anyway. Let's ask Stockfish what the top three ways are of saving the knight. All right, so let's do that right here. Stockfish says... Trading off the knight with knight takes d7 is the second best move. Playing the Pillsbury idea of f4 is the third best move. And the best and now the best move is knight takes d7. And guarding it with the other knight, knight df3 is number two. So at, at this point at 22 ply deep, you can see just take that knight on d7 as the number one move. A lot of people would take the knight on c6 and try to double the pawns. But that's not really doubling the pawns. Why not? Because these two pawns are attacking each other. That's called a lever in Kamak's book. And because those pawns are attacking each other, there's no way white can stop black from, from trading off that pawn, which means he can undouble the pawns at his will. And that doesn't really count very much as double pawns since he can undouble them anytime he wants. So knight takes d7 does help develop the bishop and connect the rook, so that looks less good, but actually Stockfish says it's about a half a pawn better. All right, back to the game, because we're coming up to a mistake here, and we want to figure out why white made this mistake. With we, we don't have white on the phone, so we're going to have to do a little detective work. All right, so, so white does guard it with knight on 2 to f3, and black plays f6. All right, so when somebody does this kind of AWL move, if you don't know what AWL is, I highly recommend you watch my earlier video, Attack with Something Worth Less, AWL. It's an important concept. It's a type of threat where you attack a piece with something worth less. And it's a very specific type of threat because when somebody does that, you know, nine times out of 10, if not 99 times out of 100, you have to move the piece that's attacked. And that's what white should do here. White should simply trade that knight for one of the other two knights and would have a fairly even game here. But White gets an idea that maybe he can get some sort of combination. He thinks maybe he could play bishop takes h7 check and follow that up with an attack. If you're going to do that, that becomes a very, very critical move. If you're just going to save the knight with knight takes c6 or knight takes d7, that's not too critical. You could make that move in, you know, 30 seconds. If you're looking at bishop h7 and you want to calculate it, that would take a couple minutes. But if you actually want to play it, it'd probably take more than a couple minutes. You got to make sure it works in every single line. Because if there's any even one line where it doesn't work, then if your opponent finds that line, then you just lose. So this is not a critical move for white unless he's going to play bishop h7 check. Now, I think most of the good players watching this video will realize bishop takes h7 check here doesn't work. It's it's not really a Greek gift or as we used to call it a classical bishop sacrifice. Uh, but if you're going to do it, you got to take time. So that's the real issue here. How much time did white take on this move? And if you look at the black, the name of black here, it's called STOTMC. What's STOTMC? That stands for one of my suggestions when you're trying to figure out what somebody did wrong, which is you should always spend time on the move chosen. So if white plays bishop takes h7 check here, he's got to take enough time to make sure that it works. So right now he's got 58-28 left, and he's got a five-second increment. Let's see how much time he took on the move. He took a minute and looks, let's say, 38 plus 5, a minute and 43 seconds. 
Well, he's betting the whole game in a minute and 43 seconds. That's just not reasonable in a 65 game. If it was a 10-minute game, well, that's more than enough time, even a 15-minute game. But in a 60-minute game, if you're going to bet the whole game on the sacrifice, you better make sure it works. So what are all the possibilities after bishop takes, king takes? Because black's not going to just give you this pawn. If black moves the king, then white can simply take the knight, and when black takes back, white can save the bishop, and then he'd be up a pawn with a great game. So black pretty much is forced to take that bishop. Otherwise, he's losing. And when you get a position like this where your opponent sacrificed a piece for a pawn and you're down a pawn, you know, nine times out of ten you have to take the piece because if you don't, you're just down a pawn for nothing and you want a piece for your troubles. Now, obviously, if you calculate king takes h7 gets you mated in two moves, you wouldn't do that. But if it just looks like white's going to get an attack, well, you don't want him to have an attack and a pawn. You want to have an attack where he's down a piece. So if you don't take this bishop here, that would be a monster error. I only really see beginners not do that. Or, of course, good players if they calculate that king takes h7 is trivially bad, which here, of course, it's not. So let's see what, what, what white had in mind. Obviously, black's going to take, and black should take a little time to take here just in case, but he pretty much has to. Let's see how much time black took. He did. He took about, uh, looks like, 54 plus 5, 59 seconds, about a minute to take the bishop. That seems about right. And now white has two ideas. He can play knight g5 check followed by queen h5 check, or he could just check on the diagonal here. There's really nothing much else he could do. If he plays like knight h4 or something slow to try to get a knight to g6, black will just take off the knight, the other knight with the pawn, and that doesn't make any sense. So let's look at knight g5 check for a minute. Knight g5 check, black would probably say thanks for more pieces. Now black's up two pieces. Queen checks, king g8, only legal move. And now if white plays knight to g6, forking the queen and the rook, he's down two pieces and he's only threatening to win the exchange. Queen to h8 check is not much of a threat because the king can come out and this rook this rook is guarded multiple times. So for instance, let's say here black plays queen to f6. Well, white's up down two pieces. If he takes the rook and black takes back with any of the pieces, then Black has three pieces for a rook, and this game is over. If we ask Stockfish what the evaluation is here, it's not even going to be close. Uh, Stockfish says, oh, wait, the bishop's hanging. we got to take with the bishop. Sorry, wasn't paying attention. All right, if we take with the bishop, which is the correct move, uh, black is down about eight pawns. Okay, so that you couldn't do. But if you play queen h8 check, well, we'll leave the evaluation running just for the fun of it. If you play queen h8 check and he plays king f7, and we turn on the evaluation, you're still down seven pawns. You have nothing better than knight takes. And again, he's going to take with the bishop to save the bishop. And black has three pieces for a rook, and he's up seven pawns. Okay, so knight g5 check isn't going to work. You have to you have to make sure there's a line where you where it is going to work or you're not going to play bishop h7 check. So what we've just determined is that the next move is not knight g5 check. All right. So if it's not knight g5 check, then maybe it's checking with the queen. But what's the idea of checking with the queen? After you check with the queen and he gets out of check, what are you going to do? Well, let's say white's idea was, well, he's, he's attacking my knight with a pawn, and what I want to do is get my knight to g6. So let's say for the sake of argument that he lets you do that, because as we'll see in the game, he won't. So in the game, white played queen c2 check, and he made that move in seven seconds. So he didn't even try to determine about knight g5 check or whether queen d3 check was better than queen c2. He just took seven seconds. So he's just playing kind of silly here. Okay, now let's say for the sake of argument, black on purpose makes a quote bad move. Let's say black plays king g8, and that's what white was counting on. Obviously, black can't play king h8 and lose the queen. That's the one move he really can't play, and he can't play king h6 to allow queen g6 checkmate. So let's say he plays king to g8. That's a typical sec bad second best move that black has. And now let's say white says, aha, 
I can save the knight by forking the queen and the king. And now black saves the queen. Um, well, I guess he could. I guess he could think about trying to win the bishop here. So maybe maybe he's got something a little bit. On knight g6, this is a little bit of removal of the guard on the bishop. So when the queen moves, the queen can't continue to guard the bishop. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see if white can get away with that. Mr. Stockfish, is this a good removal of the guard? Is white winning? Stockfish says, yep. Okay, so that means that if we look at all the moves that black has here to get out of check, yep. So they all, all the moves that get out of check lose, except for the one he played, which wins easily. And that's the point. So in the game, I think this was a student game from a long time ago. And my, stu my student was probably white. Or maybe my student was black and he showed me the game. I don't remember. But black just plays f5. And now, if the knight moves somewhere, the queen's going to continue to guard the bishop. He can't remove the guard with knight g6 because the king takes g6 now. And there's no way to win the bishop. And you can't fork the queen and the rook. So this is a big mistake. So after the game, when we're determining what the error is, we need the time stamping to figure it out. So here the time tells us the issue. White play, if we go back to the previous move, when white had to figure it all out, because this is the critical move when you have to decide yes or no, am I going to sacrifice a piece? You can't wait till the next move and go, oh, whoops, I didn't figure it out. So here he only took about a minute as we said, a minute and 40 or so to play that move. And he didn't look at all the possibilities after king takes, because if he did, he would have not made that mistake. And now he makes what I call the ABC error. The ABC error is where you play move A, and you say, if he plays move B, I'm going to play move C. And then after he does play B, you make move C right away, rather than rechecking your analysis to make sure that that's the right move. Well, in this case, white's already in big trouble. But he shouldn't make the ABC error. He shouldn't play right away. So this is a time management mistake. But it's also a calculation mistake because he's not asking himself the question, what are all the ways that black can get out of check? What are all the things my opponent can do? If you don't ask what are all the things your opponent can do, how can you find the best one and figure out how good something is? A line is only as good as your opponent allows it to be with his best moves. So you can't play a move. For instance, you can't use probability and say, well, black has one, two, three, four, five. You know, he has all these legal moves and, and only one of them wins for black. So the probability is he won't, he won't play the one that wins. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It's chess is a full information game. Black can play any move he wants. He doesn't have to flip a coin and play a random move. If he has one move that wins and all the other move loses, then... You know, if he's doing his job and taking his time, he's going to find the one that wins. And, you know, here it's not that hard. Blocking with the pawn stops everything. You've given up a bishop for a pawn, and then when he blocks with a pawn, your queen is blocked off, your knight doesn't have any forks, you don't have any removal of the guards, and you're just losing. So here, black plays f5, and look at black's time. Even though f5 is clearly the best move, Black realizes it's critical, and he wants to make sure he's not making a mistake, and he takes two minutes to play an obvious forced move. But the game would basically be over once he plays that move, so he can easily take that time in a 65 game to make sure he's not making a mistake here. And he's not, and, you know, so he's going to win. So if we're going over what White did wrong, the first thing he did wrong was he didn't take enough time on bishop h7 check. The second thing he did wrong was... He said, if he takes, I'm going to check with my queen, and then I'm going to stick my knight on g6. Now, whether he was doing that to remove the guard on the bishop or not, we'll never know. Because the only reason that works is not because you're winning the exchange. It's because you're, you're removing the guard. For instance, after king g8, knight here, if the whole idea after queen f7 was to win the exchange, that would be terrible. For instance, after knight takes, bishop takes... Let's ask Stockfish what the evaluation is. Now, if you're using Reinfeld values, which is another mistake you can make in this kind of position, the Reinfeld values would say white has a rook and a pawn for a bishop and a knight. 
Rook and pawn is worth six. Bishop and knight is worth six. So Reinfeld values would tell you it's an even trade. And some people would even say, well, not only is it six against six in an even trade, but I've opened up his king and therefore I am better. But let's ask Stockfish what the real evaluation is here. Stockfish says black is better by over four pawns. Four pawns. That's not even close to even. That's one of the problems with using the Reinfeld values is when you get into these imbalanced positions where it's like rook and pawn against two pieces, the Reinfeld values can often lead you very, very, very heavily astray. And I've seen a lot of lower rated players make that mistake. The mistake they use is, you know, as they get better, they continue to use the Reinfeld numbers and they get to positions like this. And the only way they know how to evaluate the position is by using the Reinfeld values. And they say rook and pawn versus bishop and knight, six against six, the game's about even. Well, minus four, that's an easy win for black. So saying that the position is about even when it's actually an easy win for black is an error in evaluation. And the only real cause of that is, is because not only are the Reinfeld numbers inaccurate enough in positions like this that they make pretty big mistakes, but also all the other evaluation factors in the position, for instance, the bishop pair, which is worth an extra half a pawn, not enough to account for the whole four pawns, of course, you know, isn't really included when you learn the basic Reinfeld values. So if somebody did this and they got to this position with white and they said, oh, I thought I was okay. I had a rook and a pawn for the two pieces. Uh, and uh, his king's a little bit exposed. So I, I, I was perfectly happy with white here and then they lose. You know, the source of that error is basically learning how to evaluate positions and trying to get them to be a little bit more sophisticated. The Reinfeld values are great when you first start out and you're making sure you don't just, you know, give up a rook for a knight for nothing because rooks are worth five and knights are worth three in the Reinfeld values. They're really good for stuff like that, but they're really bad for positions like this. Okay, so the source of the errors here turns out to be pretty great here for white. If he was expecting to win the exchange, that's the error we just talked about. Of course, we already saw that king g8 is bad because knight g6 is a good move, not because it forks the king and the queen, but because it removes the guard of the queen from the bishop and he gets the bishop. But the real error that white made was he didn't take time to look at all the defenses. And if he had seen f5, I can't believe he would play this. You know, at this point, knight g5, is not a threat anymore. I mean, he could play bishop h4 followed by knight g5, but without the queen coming up to h5, because the queen's already off that diagonal, it's going to be too slow. So there's really nothing he can do here. As you can see, I have Stockfish running on the bottom. Stockfish says white's best move is h4, and it says white's down 3.3, which is about roughly the value of the bishop he sacked. So white is just losing. So we're trying to find sources of the error. In this case, Time management is a big source. Not asking yourself what are all the moves your opponent can do as a source. Maybe using the wrong uh, evaluation system as a source. And we try to work on that. We try to say, okay, next time you're playing, if you want to play bishop takes h7 check, you know, you want to use a fair amount of time, spend time on the move chosen. You want to spend a fair amount of time if you're going to bet the whole game on a move. Right now, White has 58 minutes and 28 seconds on his clock. He's got plenty of time. If he's going to play a move like bishop h7 check, you really should take four, five, six, seven minutes to really make sure that it really works. Because if it doesn't, you've just lost the game with 58 minutes left on your clock in a 60-minute game. You want to take your time, and then after he takes, you don't want to play the next move in seven seconds. You know, if you've got several candidate moves, even if you only have one, make sure... It really works the way you think, because if it doesn't work, then maybe you want to try something else. Right here, queen c2 check, as we see from the, which he played, is as good as anything. The problem is he's got nothing. Bishop h7 check was the key mistake, and now he's playing a move in seven seconds, and he's lucky he found the best move, but he's very unlucky that the best, it really doesn't make much difference. The best, if we look at the second best move, it's not going to be that much worse save the knight first before you do anything. And we see both the, the first, the best move is minus 3.58. The second best move is minus 3.92 right now. So they're both like terribly losing. 
So the fact that White's now finding his best move isn't much comfort at this point. The, the, the error is already done, and we don't know if he looked ahead and saw King takes Queen C2 and then didn't see F5, or whether he saw it and he thought it was still good. We, we don't, just don't know. But we, we'd talk to him and we'd find out, you know, what did you think Black was going to play after Queen C2 check? Did you just not take enough time to realize that F5 was the only defense, but it's not the only the only defense. It's it's a very, very good defense, and it's winning the game. That's the kind of thing we want to find out. What's the source of the error? Next time you play, how can you play a little differently so that you won't be making the same mistakes? As I said in my chess tip of the day yesterday on Twitter, at Dan Heisman, I said, don't be afraid of losing a game. Be afraid of playing a game and not learning anything. Or maybe be afraid of playing a game and making the same mistakes over and over and over again. You always want to stop. The best way to improve is to not make the same mistakes. That's why you go over games with good players and you talk to them and you learn about misconceptions. You go over the games with the engines. You go over the games with the database. You know, you don't want to make the same mistake in the opening over and over and over again, year after year after year, when we've got all these databases, books, engines, and so on, which can tell you, hey, if you're playing that opening on the fourth move, don't play that move you keep playing. That's not a very good move. Play a better move. We have all these resources these days, and you could use them. If you don't use those resources and you just keep making the same mistakes in the opening over and over, you're at a tremendous disadvantage against people who do do things to try to learn from their mistakes and try to alleviate them and mitigate them so that they don't happen again. All right, hopefully you enjoyed today's video about uh, the source of our mistakes and trying to mitigate them. We'll see you next time. If you uh, tell your friends about our channel, Dan Heisman Chess, that'd be great. See you next time. Bye.